Hi, my name is Henry Greenwald, and my topic is Jews and Comics. I chose this topic because I love to draw my own comics. I learned that Jews built the comic industry from the ground up. One possible explanation for this is that since anti-Semitism had barred them from joining other industries, Jews were forced to start their own industry. The comic book industry then became a place where Jews could publish their work without discrimination. Economic times were hard, and Jews tried whatever they could to make money. In 1934, the first comic book was created. Comic strips have been around since 1842, but this was the first time they were sold in the book separate from a newspaper. Maxwell Gaines realized that it was the comic that sold the newspapers and made a book out of them. Maxwell Gaines and Harry Wildenberg, both Jews, created Famous Funnies number one. They were losing money by selling them up until the seventh issue. To keep the readers interested, they had to keep coming up with new and interesting ideas, such as picture stories of the Bible, the first educational comic book. In 1938, Superman was created by Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel, starting what is now known as the Golden Age of Comics, which would last until 1956. They were working for barely any pay, making only $13 for 10 pages. Superman opened the door for many superheroes to come, and although he is often thought of as the first superhero, Mandrake the Magician enthusiast will be sure to tell you different. Superman was based loosely on the Popeye, but as Moses' story. Superman was launched in a rocket to Earth by his father to escape Krypton, much like Moses was sent down the Nile. They were both adopted by families and spent their time fighting evil. In May of 1939, Bob Kahn, who you may have heard of as Bob Kane, and Bill Finger created Batman, another now famous hero. By 1941, after the Great Depression, there were 30 comic book publishers. After Maxwell Gaines died in 1947, he gave his company to his son, Bill Gaines. Bill turned educational comics into entertaining comics. Entertaining comics told horror stories, but it also talked about racism and addressed many other problems in the world, such as drug addiction and police misconduct. These comics were legendary, but 1950s America was not ready for them. Skip forward to 1952, when Mad started as a comic book, founded by Harvey Kurtzman. It is the only surviving piece of EC Comics around today. In the 1950s, people attributed the rise in juvenile delinquency to comics, and the industry suffered. The Seduction of the Innocent was published in 1954 by Frederick Wertheron. The Comics Code Authority had to be made. In 1955, Mad was made into a magazine to avoid these charges and keep selling. Mad Magazine stars Alfred E. Newman and occasionally has Yiddish vernaculars like Oy Bay and Gone. In World War II, Captain America was given a nemesis, the Nazi Red Skull. Captain America beat up Nazis and punched Hitler in the face. After World War II, when there were no more Nazis to beat up, Captain America started fighting the Hydra, a group very similar to the Nazi party. Recently, in an attempt to spice things up, they revealed Captain America was secretly a Hydra agent. All fans of comics collectively lost their minds, and so in the next comic book, it was revealed that he was being influenced by Michigos, a word that means craziness in Yiddish. In 1961, Stan Lee, Warren Stanley Lieberman and Jack Kirby started the Marvel Age. Many important characters remain in this age, one of the biggest being the Fantastic Four made by Stanley. One of these characters was Ben Grimm, the Thing. Ben Grimm was a Jew born to a poor family in Lower East Manhattan on the fictional Yancey Street, which was inspired by the Delancey Street where Jack Kirby grew up. He was turned into an orange rock monster through Radish. He seems a little bit like the Golem from Jewish folklore. Art Spiegelman, a Jewish cartoonist, made Mouse, which tells the story of his father's experience in the Holocaust. In the graphic novel, Jews are mice, Nazis are cats, and the other civilians are pigs. He wanted to make a book about inequality, and it was at first going to be about people of color and the KKK. Originally, Mouse was only three pages, but eight years later, Art turned it into two graphic novels. Mouse is the only graphic novel to win a Pulitzer Prize. There are many core Jewish values which superheroes follow, the most obvious being saving a life, or Pekua Nefesh. Superheroes have been saving people for as long as they have been around. Lashon Hara, speak no evil. Superheroes are always against evil and spend most of their time battling Bill. Tikkun Olam, repair the world. Superheroes constantly have to solve big problems which concern all of humanity. Ahava Ger, welcoming the stranger. Superheroes welcome and protect everyone, even people they do not know. Here are some recent instances of Jews in comics. The first Jewish Comic Con was in 2018, and Captain Israel was created fairly recently. New X-Men are being made, 
and many of them are Jewish, although surprisingly, the majority of Jewish X-Men were created in the 1980s. Magneto, a character who has been around since 1985, was very recently revealed to be Jewish. His backstory is that as a child, he was in a concentration camp, which made him hate humans. Taika Waititi is a Maori Jew and film director from New Zealand. He has directed or played roles in Green Lantern, Thor Ragnarok, and Avengers Endgame. He most recently directed a film called Jojo Rabbit, about a German boy in the Hitler Youth who eventually helps a Jewish girl to survive World War II and stands up to his once imaginary friend Hitler. Jews and comics have been inseparable from the very beginning. They have shaped the comic book industry, and the comics have shaped the lives of many people. Thank you.